This is the story of how one developer created an entire operating system that's been praised by developers for three decades. And it's a huge source of inspiration for me personally. And it starts here with Linus Torvalds. This is Linux, the origin story. Linus was just a regular student, not unlike many others, and the simple key to his success is the fact that he didn't settle for what others could make. If something wasn't good enough, he tried to make it himself and share his work with the world. Having grown up in Helsinki, Finland, Linus entered the University of Helsinki in 1988 and began his studies in computer science. After his first year, he had to go to the army, but then after around 11 months, he returned to the university to continue his studying, and it was during this time that he began the Linux project. The first online post regarding his creation of Linux dates back to the 25th of August in 1991. I'm doing a free operating system, just a hobby, won't be big and professional like new, for 386, 486, 80 clones. Linus's interests in computers began with a Commodore VIC-20 on which he started to learn programming prior to his time in university. Initially he learned BASIC, but later he learned the machine code of the processor to access it directly, and he then bought a Sinclair QL computer and he heavily modified it including the operating system, and due to the difficulty of getting software in Finland, he eventually ended up creating his own games and other programs and eventually even made a Pac-Man clone. In 1990 he was introduced to the operating system Unix for the first time, and personally he started studying the Unix-like operating system Mimix, and after 1991 he bought his Intel 8386 clone of the IBM PC. And as was already common for Linux, the software available for the system was not really satisfactory. Mimix really couldn't do what he wanted it to do and was sort of limited due to its licensing. And so this is what led to the motivation behind creating the Linux project. Having become very familiar with the Unix-like operating systems, Linus started out writing a task switcher and terminal driver for his Intel processor in the spring of 1991 using the Intel x86 assembly language for the chip. This marked the beginning of the Linux project. And as shown by his very first post about Linux back in 1991, Linus was very interested in and followed very closely the open source new project. But as the new project had failed to create a stable kernel, he basically pushed forward with making his own. The kernel is in simple terms the core of an operating system that has control over the system and runs the most essential components like the processor, memory, I.O. and etc. It's what connects the user applications with the hardware. Linus actually later stated that if the new kernel had existed back in 1991, he never would have created the Linux project. And so on September 17th, 1991, Linus uploaded the very first version of Linux, which was named 0.0.1. And he uploaded this to a server at his university, but it still wasn't executable because it still depended on Minix for compiling. The first official version of Linux was called 0.0.2 and was released on the 5th of October in 1991, 30 years ago. It still wasn't much better than the first version, but it could run Bash, GCC, and some new utilities. Following the open source mentality of the new project, Linus shared the source code, and this led to many like-minded people joining his project, including some people from the Minix community. While the Linux kernel was very limited in its functionality, it actually worked, unlike the GNU kernel, this attracted many developers and users even in the infancy of Linux. The GNU project had created many other components for an operating system, and many of these components found their way to Linux, and therefore the Free Software Foundation refers to Linux as a GNU slash Linux to give credit to the GNU project for their contribution. Another advantage was that Unix was popular in academia, so by making a Unix-like operating system, it would be easier for other students to join in. And in terms of business use, it's also turned out to be quite great. But because it was so similar to Unix, the change from Unix to Linux is quite simple. And these factors have helped Linux become so popular. With the help of the open source community, the very simple task switcher and terminal driver had turned into a real production ready operating system. And this was marked with the release of Linux 1.0.0 in March of 1994. At that point, the Linux kernel had 176,250 lines of code. 
Regarding the naming of Linux, Linus actually wanted to call the operating system Freaks as a combination of the words free, freak, and X. He had considered Linux, but he thought it sounded a little bit too big headed. So actually, if you look at some of the project's early make files, you will find the name Freak included. It eventually ended up being known as Linux, since Linus was the founder and the operating system is very similar to Unix. Today, the latest version of the Linux kernel is version 5, and most of the big tech companies like Intel, Huawei, and Google contribute to the development of Linux. And considering the very humble beginnings and that very first post from Linus back when he announced that he started working on Linux, it's kind of crazy to think that this whole thing has developed into this crazy, like, huge operating system that's really professional and that's being used by these huge corporations. And to me, this is such an inspiring thing because at the end of the day, this is just a story of one person who decided to make something that he thought was cool and then shared it with the world. The future of Linux looks really bright and as of 2021, there are more than 27 million lines of code in the Linux Git repository and all of the world's top 500 supercomputers run Linux. If you look at the top 25 websites in the world, then all but two run Linux. Likewise, 96% of the world's 1 million top servers and 90% of cloud infrastructure runs Linux. The most popular operating system for smartphones is Android, but Android is based on Linux, so this means that most smartphones in the world run Linux. For desktop use, some of the most popular distributions are Mint, Debian, and Ubuntu. So as you might sense, there are Linux distributions for different devices and different users, and that shows that Linux can basically run on anything. One of the reasons why Linux isn't so popular on desktops is because many applications made for Windows do not run on Linux, and Linux has also been particularly behind on gaming. In recent years, however, a lot of effort has been put into improving gaming compatibility on Linux, and according to the Steam hardware survey, Linux has grown from around 0.8% user base to around 1% in the last three years. This might not seem like much, but it's a very positive trend for Linux, and we might see more gamers switching to Linux in the coming years. And the great thing about the open source nature of Linux is the fact that it's free to try. So if you become excited about Linux and you want to try it, you can head over to one of the Linux distro sites and download the distro of your choice and just try it out for free, either on an old laptop that you have lying around that you're not using or in like a virtual machine, which is something that you can run on your current laptop or computer without any real issues. I'll actually leave some links to some of my top, like, the best distros that I think you should try. And, um, yeah, that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope I'll see you in the next one.